Hey everybody, I am so sorry about our technical difficulties today. It makes me a little bit sad, but I did try my best and use the scientific method to fix it. But my best solution is to record it here and hopefully you found me and are watching me on my page right now. So I'm, I won't be able to hear you or hear your comments, but by Monday we'll get this all up and running again and we'll be able to have a nice conversation. So today we have a really exciting show. Um, I pre-recorded some of it, pre-pre-recorded it from this um, because it's a little bit messy. The first thing we're going to do is read Bartholomew and the Ooblek, and then we're going to see if we can make some ourselves. So let me bring up my storybook. Bartholomew and the Ooblek is a classic Dr. Seuss book. I actually never read it when I was younger. So it's going to be fun to share it with you now. So here it is. There we go. And I'm just going to fix the window a little bit. Perfect. Okay, Bartholomew and the Oobleck by Dr. Seuss. And it looks like we got this scanned by the Boston Public Library. Thanks, Boston Public Library. Oh my goodness, that's so silly. Bartholomew and the Ooblek, written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss, a Random House New York publishing book. <clears throat> They still talk about it in the kingdom of Did as the year the king got angry with the sky. And they still talk about the page boy, Bartholomew Cubbins. If it hadn't been for Bartho Bartholomew Cubbins, the king and that sky would have wrecked that little kingdom. Bartholomew had seen the king get angry many, many times before. But that year, when his majesty started growling at the sky, Bartholomew Cubbins just didn't know what to make of it. Yet, all that year, the old king did it. All year long, he stared up into the air above his kingdom, muttering and sputtering through his royal whiskers, Humph! The things that come down from my sky! All spring, when the rain came down, he growled at that. And it looks like he's looking through a telescope. All summer, when the sunshine came down, he growled at that. Hmm. Who growls at the sun? All autumn, when the fog came down, he growled at that. Hmm. And that winter, when the snow came down, he started shouting, This snow, this fog, this sunshine, this rain, bah, these four things that come down from my sky. But King Derwin, Bartholomew tried to calm him down. You've always had these four things come down. That's just the trouble, bellowed the king. Every year, the same four things. I'm mightily tired of these old things, and I want some new to come down. Something new come down, Bartholomew gasped. That's impossible, your majesty. You can't just have it. Boy, don't you tell me what I can or cannot have. Remember, Bartholomew, I am king. I, I know, sire, said Bartholomew. You rule all the lands and you rule all the people, but even kings can't rule the sky. Can't, uh? His majesty flew into a terrible rage. Well, maybe other kings can't do it, but maybe I'm one king who can. You mark my words, Bartholomew Cubans. I will have something new come down. But how to get something new to come down? That was rather hard to think of. And for many days, the old king stomped around trying to figure out some way to do it. Then, finally, late one night, when all the lords and ladies of the palace were fast asleep, just as the king was buttoning his royal nightshirt, he suddenly stopped still. A strange, wild light began to shine in his gray-green eyes. 
Why, of course, he began laughing. <laughs> they can do it for me. Bartholomew Cubbins, blow my secret whistle. Quick, call my royal magicians. Your magicians, your majesty? Bartholomew shivered. Oh, no, your majesty, don't call them. You hold your tongue, Bartholomew Cubbins. You do as I command you, blow my secret whistle. Yes, sire, Bartholomew bowed. But, your majesty, I, I, I still think that you may be very sorry. He took the king's secret whistle from its secret hook. He blew a long, low blast down the king's back secret stairway, and a moment later he heard them coming, up from their musty hole beneath the dungeon, up the empty midnight tunnel to the royal bedchamber tower came the magicians on their padded shuffling feet. Up and right into the room they came chanting, Shuffle, duffle, muzzle, muff, Feasta, weesta, mista, cuff, We are men of groans and bowls, <coughs> We are men of groans and howls, Mystic men who eat boiled owls, Tell us what you think, O oh king. O oh, magic can do anything. I wish, spoke the king, to have you make something fall from my skies that no other kingdom has ever had before. What can you do? What will you make? Ooh, looks like those are the magicians. And a little mouse. For a moment, they stood thinking, blinking their creaky eyes. Then they spoke a word, one word. Oobleck. Oobleck, said the king. What will it look like? Won't look like rain, won't look like snow, won't look like fog. That's all we know. We can't tell you any more. We've never made Ooblek before. They bowed, and they scattered towards the door. We go now to our secret cave on Mystic Mountain, Nika Tave. There all night long we'll work for you, and you'll have Ooblek when we're through. They'll, they'll do something crazy, whispered Bartholomew. Call them back, your majesty, stop them. Stop them? Not for a million diamonds, chuckled the king. Why, I'll be the mightiest man that ever lived. Just think of it. Tomorrow I'm going to have Ooblek. It took Bartholomew a long time to get the excited king to sleep that night, but there was no sleep for Bartholomew the page boy. All night long he stood in the king's window, staring out the mystic mountain Nik Nikatav. Somewhere up there, Bartholomew knew the magicians were working their terrible magic. Oh boy, I wonder what it's gonna look like. I only see one color. I see black, white, and what other color do you see here? I wonder what that means. All night the magicians did. All night they walked in circles round their magic fire, making magic mumbling with their clucking tongues. Oh, snow and rain are not enough. Oh, we must make some brand new stuff, so feed the fire with wet mouse hair. Burn an onion, burn a chair, burn a whisker from your chin, and burn a long sour lizard skin burn yellow twigs and burn red rust and burn a stocking full of dust make magic smoke green thick and hot it sure smells dreadful does it not that means the smoke is now just right so quick before the day gets light Go, magic smoke, go high, go high, go rise into the kingdom sky. Go make the oobleck tumble down on every street in every town. Go make the windows oobleck falls. Oh, 
bring down Ublek on us all. Dawn was just breaking and Bartholomew was standing, trembling, watching at the bedchamber window. But now as the sun rose, Bartholomew smiled. Those silly magicians hadn't done a thing. Then, suddenly, Bartholomew Coven stopped smiling when he... Was he seeing things? No, there was something strange up in the sky. At first, it seemed like a little greenish cloud, just a wisp of greenish steam, but now it was coming lower, closer, down towards the fields and farms and houses on the sleeping little kingdom. It was swirling around the topmost turrets of the palace. Tiny little greenish specks were shimmering in the air. Right over his head, queer little greenish blobs just about the size of grape seeds. He stretched out his hand. He started to catch one. Then he pulled his hand back. There was something frightening about those blobs, Bartholomew slammed the window shut. Wake up, your majesty, he shouted. Yo, Ublek, it's falling. Can you make that face that the king's making? The king sprang out of his royal bed sheets. By my royal whiskers it is, he cried. Oh, that beautiful Ublek, it's mine. Oh, mine. I don't like the looks of those blobs, sire, said Bartholomew. They're coming down now as greenish peanuts. The bigger the better, laughed the king. Oh, what a day! I'm going to make it a holiday! I want every man, woman, and child in my kingdom to go out and dance in my glorious oobleck. Out in that stuff? asked Bartholomew. Do you really think it's safe, sire? Stop asking foolish questions, snapped the king. Boy, you run to my royal bell tower. Wake my royal bell winger. Tell him to ring the great holiday bell. For a moment, Bartholomew Cubbins didn't move. Run, barked the king. Bartholomew ran. Across the sleeping palace, Bartholomew ran. Then up the ladder of the high bell tower, he climbed to the bell ringer's little cubby hole in the bell fry. Ring your bell. Oh, no. Ring your bell, he called. His majesty, the king, proclaims today is a holiday. The old man crawled out of his cot. He grabbed the bell rope. What's the holiday for, Bartholomew? You'll find out soon enough, said Bartholomew. The bell ringer yanked the rope. Nothing happened. He yanked it harder. Still, nothing happened. Heh, what is wrong with my bell, he mu muttered. Let me take a look inside. He poked his head out through the little trap door. Merciful gracious, he gulped. What is that? All over my bell like greenish molasses. Not only your bell, Bartholomew cried. Look at the poor robin down there in the tree. She's stuck to her nest. She can't move a wing. That ublex gooey. It's gummy. It's like glue. Oh, the, ring, the bell ringer wrung his hands. If that green stuff sticks up robins, It'll stick up people, too. Someone's got to warn the people, cried Bartholomew. Got to wake them and warn them to stay inside their houses. I'll tell the royal trumpeter, he shouted. He turned and slid like lightning down the bell tower ladder. To the trumpeter's tower raced Bartholomew Cubbins and on up the steps four stairs at a time. And he ran. As he ran, he could hear the plop, plop, plop of the oobleck on the window panes. It was pelting against the palace walls as big as greenish cupcakes now. So at first it was as big as a grape seed. Then as big as, what was the second thing? Grapes? Drops? Now it's as big as a cupcake, so it's getting bigger. He yanked the covers off the snoring trumpeter. He shoved his cold trumpet right into his sleepy hand. Get up! Warn the people! Sound the alarm! Uh, alarm? <sighs> Yawned the trumpeter. Ooh. 
then his eyes saw the oobleck. Those green things, Bartholomew, where did they come from? The king, panted Bartholomew, his royal magicians made them. The royal trumpeter leapt from his bed. That king of ours should be ashamed. He jabbed his trumpet out of the window. I'll blow, he shouted, the loudest alarm that's ever been heard in the kingdom of Did. But all the royal trumpeter blew was a glug, glug. My horn, he gulped. One of those green things flew inside it. He tried to blow it out. He couldn't blow it out. He tried to shake it out. He couldn't shake it out. I'll get it somehow, he yelled. I'll pull it out. No, shouted Bartholomew. Don't touch it. The trumpeter's hand was already in it. His fingers grabbed hold of the lump of oobleck. He could feel it squiggle around in his fist like a slippery potato dumpling made of rubber. He pulled with all of his might. The oobleck began to stretch and then gloing. The oobleck snapped back inside the trumpet. It yanked his arm back with it right into the elbow, right up to the elbow. I can't wiggle a finger, the trumpeter wailed. Oh, Bartholomew, what'll I do? I don't know, and I'll have to leave you stuck to your horn, but if you can't warn the people of the kingdom, I've got to find someone who can. Out of the room and down the stairs raced Bartholomew Cubbins. Down to the chamber of the captain of the guards. The captain was humming in front of his mirror, combing the ends of his handsome mustache. Captain, to do something, shouted Bartholomew. Do something? Why? Smiled the captain. What's wrong? Captain, haven't you seen the dreadful oobleck? It's coming down now as big as greenish baseballs. Baseballs? It was as big as a cupcake. Now it's as big as a baseball. Oh, boy. <laughs> that stuff, laughed the captain. What's so dreadful about that lad? You know, I think it's rather pretty. Captain, pleaded Bartholomew, it's dangerous. Nonsense, snorted the captain. Lad, you are trying to frighten me. Captains, my boy, are afraid of nothing. That stuff is harmless. I'll show you. I'll eat some. Eat some? gasped Bartholomew. Oh, no. But Bar before Bartholomew could stop him, the captain was leaning out his window, scooping up some oobleck on the end of his sword. Don't, captain! Don't! The captain did. By the time Bartholomew dragged him back inside the room, his mouth was glued tight shut with a oobleck. He tried to speak, but no words came out. All the noble captain of the guards could do was blow a lot of a little silly greenish bubbles. Can you talk with your mouth glued shut? It's really hard. Forgive me for leaving you, Captain, said Bartholomew, but a captain full of bubbles is no help at all. Bartholomew stretched the poor man out. He left him there on his chamber floor. Bartholomew went tearing through the zigzag palace hallways. I'll get the king's horse. I'll ride through the country. I'll warn the people of the kingdom myself. He pushed open the door that led out to the royal stables. Look how big it's getting now. Oh, no. Bartholomew's trying to be a hero and save everybody. Bartholomew stopped. He could go no further. The awful oobleck was plumping down as big as greenish footballs now. Too late to warn the people of the kingdom. There were farmers in the fields getting stuck to hoes and plows. Goats were getting stuck to ducks. Geese were getting stuck to cows. Outside the palace, it was piling up great greenish tongues of oobleck, deeper and deeper on every roof in the land. There was nothing Bartholomew Cubbins could do out there. Shaking his head sadly, he stepped back inside. But inside, a moment later, it was just as bad as out. With an angry roar, the oobleck was suddenly hitting the palace harder. It was battering and spattering against the walls as big as greenish buckets full of gooey asparagus soup. Ew. 
like a sinking sailboat. The whole palace was springing leaks. The oobleck was ripping the windows right off the hinges. I have a sneeze. Uh-oh. The oobleck scared it away. Okay. It was dripping through the ceilings. It was rolling down the chimneys. It was coming in everywhere, even through the keyholes. From every bedroom in the palace came the howls of lords and ladies. Frightened in their nightgowns, they came jumping to their doors. Go back to your beds! Go back to your blankets! Bartholomew Cubbins went crying through the halls. But nobody paid the slightest attention. Everybody in the palace started mash rushing madly about. The number one rule in an emergency is don't panic, and it looks like they're panicking. Ooh. Itchy nose. Don't touch your face, kids. The royal cook rushed down to the royal kitchen. Bartholomew Cubbins saw him trapped there, stuck to three stew pots and a teacup and a cat. The royal laundries rushed outside to save her laundry. Bartholomew saw her stuck tight to the clothesline between two woolen stockings and the king's best Sunday blouse. Ooh, boy. Do you see him rushing through the window? And it looks like there's a cello that got stuck and someone's violin or viola. He saw the royal fiddlers. They were stuck to their royal fiddles. Everywhere Bartholomew ran, he saw someone stuck to something. They were stuck up by the dozens. Every last friend he had in the world was flapping and floundering, all hopelessly caught in the goo. Then, suddenly, midst the hubbub, Bartholomew gasped, The king! Where was the king? He'd forgotten all about him. It was in the throne room that Bartholomew found him there. He sat, old King Derwin, proud and mighty ruler of the kingdom of Did, trembling, shaking, helpless as a baby. His royal crown was stuck to his royal head. The seat of his royal pants were stuck to his royal throne. Ooblek was dripping from his royal eyebrows. It was oozing into his royal ears. Fetch my magicians, Bartholomew, he commanded. Make them say some magic words. Make them stop the oobleck falling. Bartholomew shrugged his shoulders. I can't fetch them, your majesty. Their cave on Mount Nikitav is buried deep in oobleck. Then I must think of some magic words, groaned the king. Oh, what are those words those magicians say? Shuffle. Duffle, muzzle, muff. That's all I can remember, and that's all I can remember, and they don't do any good. The oobleck keeps on falling harder. Yikes. Bartholomew Cubbins could hold his tongue no longer. And it's going to keep on falling, he shouted, until your whole great marble palace tumbles down. So don't waste your time saying foolish magic words. You ought to be saying some plain simple words. Simple words? What do you mean, boy? I mean, said Bartholomew, this is all your fault. Now the least you can do is say the simple words, I'm sorry. No one had ever talked to the king like this before. What? He bellowed, me, me say I'm sorry. Kings never say I'm sorry. And I am the mightiest king in all the world. Bartholomew looked the king square in the eye. You may be a mighty king, he said, but you're sitting in Ublek up to your chin. And so is everyone else in your land. And if you won't say you're sorry, then you're no sort of king at all. Bartholomew Cubbins turned his back. He started for the throne room door. But then Bartholomew heard a great deep sob. The old king was crying. Come back, Bartholomew Cubbins. You're right. It is all my fault, and I am sorry. Oh, Bartholomew, I'm awfully, awfully sorry. And the moment the king spoke those words, something happened. 
Maybe there was something magic in those simple words. I'm sorry. Maybe there was some simple magic in those simple words. It's all my fault. Maybe there was, and maybe there wasn't. But they say that as soon as the old king spoke them, the sun began to shine and the fight and fight its way through the storm. They say that the falling oobleck blobs grew smaller and smaller and smaller. They say that all the oobleck that was stuck on the people and all the animals of the kingdom of Did just simply, quietly melted away. And then they say Bartholomew took the old king by the sleeve and led him up to the steps of the high bell tower. He put the bell rope into his majesty's royal hands and the king himself rang the holiday bell. Then the king proclaimed a brand new holiday in honor of the four perfect things that come down from the sky. The king now knew that those four old fashioned things, the rain, the sunshine, the fog, and the snow were good enough for any king in the world, especially him, old King Derwin, king of did. Oops. The end. So that was Bartholomew and the Oobleck, a really, really fun story of uh, redemption, apologies, and a little bit of a mess. So now I want to send it to D in the lab. Let's see if we can get that going. Okay, we're here with Oobleck that I made myself. All you have to do is combine cornstarch and water, about a cup of cornstarch and a half a cup of water, and what you get is something called a non-Newtonian fluid. Okay, I'm going to talk that a little bit. That means it acts a little bit differently depending on the situation. So what? Uh, so when I squeeze it like this, I can feel it's a hard ball, bit of and as soon as I let go of the pressure, a little bit of water. It's a cup of dry cornstarch and a half just a just cup like of oobleck. water. You want to make now, when you're sure doing this you've experiment, got an apron you need to make sure that and you're staying nice over some and clean and I took some extra to wrapping paper from the holidays. So I set up some and extra gift wrap that when you over try an to ottoman. I've got a lunch tray. Hands, it's and a solid. one of my favorite versatile containers, but my Aldi Mini Eclair. Uh, when you take the pressure off of it, it so turns this is really into fun. a liquid. You can fill up so a really big container with it and try to walk over it. But I'm doing this inside, so I don't want to make too, too much of a mess. You don't have to use gloves. I just don't love getting my hands too messy. So I like to use my rubber gloves. And make sure that you're wearing a nice uh, now, apron you don't have just to like wear this. gloves. I wear gloves now, just because I don't love getting my hands all dirty. If it does get on the ground, that's okay. Because remember, it acts as a solid when there's, makes pressure, the up a little bit easier. when there's pressure on it. So if you like if it does it together, get on it'll be easy anything, to get it's just cornstarch, so it will come off, but it does look so a So experiment with this. See what happens. And don't forget, the only difference between messing you around watch and doing science is you'll writing see how it heavy down. The so make was sure you write down all of your notes when you're done your experiment down. and get your messy gloves off. Oobleck. Ew. Okay, kids, so only do this at home. If you're grown up, say it's okay. <laughs> Only if you're grown up say it is okay. Now, I would like to show you a video about the four states of matter. So let's check that out. All right, everybody, are you ready for the three states of matter song? Here we go. of matter, they all have mass. Solid, liquid, and gas, they all have mass. Oh yeah. Solid is firm, solid is hard, just like the rocks in your back. Looks like it's not playing on my screen. That's okay, I will link it in the comments and you can sing solid, liquid, and gas. Now, the dance that I like to do is what solids, liquids, and gases act like as molecules. Molecules are those little teeny tiny building blocks. So solids, if these are the molecules, are really close together and really, really slow. So when we talk about solids, we're moving slow. When we're talking about liquids, they're a little farther apart, 
All right, not too fast, not too slow. Liquids fill the shape of their container. And then gases, they're my favorite of all because they bounce off the walls. They go really, really crazy. So when we talk about a solid, liquid, and gas, we can go solid, liquid, and gas. So when we talked about our oobleck, the oobleck is a mix between a solid and a liquid. Now, gas, is that the same kind of gas that we sometimes get after lunchtime and it smells a little bit? Is it? It totally is. Now that's a different type of gas that's called methane, but same thing. Everyone take a deep breath in, deep breath out. That is a gas that you just breathed in. So I kind of, when I was thinking about the oobleck and thinking about states of matter, it did remind me of a song. Um, I don't know about you, but it kind of reminded me of a, of snow a little bit, like making a snowman. So I wanted to try a song that I think some of you might know, and some of you have been asking me to play. So here we go. I think you might know it. Do you want to build a snowman? Come on, let's go and play. I never see you anymore. Come on out the door. It's like you've gone away. <laughs> All right, we'll start that over. Here we go. <clears throat> We're going to start lower. Do you want, do you want to build a snowman? Okay, here we go. Do you want to build a snowman?
say goodbye and sing our goodbye song. And remember, even when things go wrong, they can still be kind of fun. So thank you for joining me and thanks for having patience today. So long, farewell to you, my friend. Goodbye for now until we meet again. So long, farewell to you, my friend. Goodbye for now until we meet again. It's been great to play and breathe together in the hive, but now it's time to say goodbye. So long, farewell to you, my friend. Goodbye for now until we meet again. So long, everybody. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 2 p.m. Don't forget to tune in.